I was invited by a Pokemon World Champion to the first ever Pokemon Legends Arceus tournament, where I was going to battle and try and beat some of the biggest YouTubers and streamers out there, and I was going to do it all with a Quillfish. But how does a Pokemon Legends tournament even work? And how did I get in? This is how I survived the first ever professional Pokemon Legends Arceus tournament. Well, I guess I should start at the start. It started when Wolfie VGC, a Pokemon World Champion, put out a tweet saying he was organizing the first ever content creator tournament for Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, I'd never worked with Wolfie before, and there were some pretty big people in the lineup with some serious clout. Guys, I am like, I'm a tiny fish in a big, big ass pond today. We had RT Game, Alpha Rad, Jaden Animations, Pokemon Challenge, and way more already signed up. So getting in for me was pretty unlikely. I mean, luckily though, I had the power of being a niche micro celebrity with an awesome fan base. So after a shameless retweet, asking people to gas me up, we had the single most liked reply on the tweet. Yeah, I'm pretty famous. I couldn't be ignored now. Wolfie had no choice but to slide into my DMs and I was in. The day of the tournament finally rolled around, but you're probably wondering how does a Pokemon Legends Arceus tournament even work? Well, here it is. You're given 30 minutes to catch a team of six Pokemon in Pokemon Legends Arceus. You then use those Pokemon to make a team in Pokemon Showdown, an online battle simulator. I'd made some preparations and I was feeling pretty confident. But little did I know that the first Pokemon that I was going to try and catch was going to be a little bit of a problem. Weird. Oh, people are leaving. Where are we going? Yeah, go, go. Oh, go? Yeah. Go? I was muted. What? Uh, hold up. I wanted this owl from Polion. I really, really needed something on my team to fight the enemy Togekiss. This tournament was going to be played in the double battle format. Not only is Togekiss a great combination of fairy and flying, but it also gets some of the best support moves in the game. You know what? I really thought using the most powerful ball in the game on this Empoleon was going to make things easy to catch. But boy, was I wrong. You son of a bitch, that is bad. Please stay in. I re when I was testing this, they all just stayed in. What is this? When he's eating, does he react to me? He does. This is this is going so badly, so quickly. Okay, that was in the back. That's gotta be it, that's gotta be it, that's gotta be it. What is this? Get in! Little bounce, little bounce, little bounce, let's go. What? This is the worst start possible. Okay, okay, we've got one. Finally, okay, that took me five minutes. At this rate, I was really gonna have trouble getting my whole team together in time. I had to move on to the next area. We're going to the Coronet Highlands. I planned on making a Sandstorm team. And for a Sandstorm team, you need a Sandstorm setter, which is where Hippowdon comes in. I caught the hippo after a few throws and moved on. Next up was Bronzong. Bronzong was a really solid pick and turned out to be one of the most common Pokemon in the entire tournament. I think Bronzong's a good pick here. The levitate ability, gonna be so good. Yes, we're out of here. All right, two areas done. And we've only spent eight minutes. We got half the team already. We were back on track. Half the team was caught, but I hadn't caught my secret weapon yet. I moved on to the Obsidian Fieldlands to catch my next two team members. First up was Gastrodon, yet another very common pick. Jaden Animations even had two of them. We caught Gastrodon without too much of a problem and moved on to the secret weapon. Here they are. It's This is the new meta we've all been looking for, the Quillfish. You guys might be thinking, it's like, oh cool, he's got a new evolution. He's gonna be using Overquill. Wrong! We are just using regular Quillfish, not this Overquill. I promise it's genius. I'll explain it later, but just trust me, there is some method to my madness here. We're racing through it. Not even halfway through the time and I've caught fire to my six Pokemon. Now you can't have a sand team without this absolute beast. After some serious stealth, a couple of failed balls and a lot of honey, we finally completed the team. Surely that's the one. There we go, all right. That's it. That's it, team, team is done with 14 minutes to spare. So I killed some time by opening a pack of Pokemon cards, which actually turned out to be really good. Whoa, yo! We've got 
Yo, what a pack! Luck was on my side so far. Next, it was time to make the team. As you can see, the sets have already been made. So I've finished with a lot of time to spare. So I guess I should explain my Quillfish now. Now in my opinion, Quillfish has always been a decent pick for competitive Pokemon. It gets the absolutely broken Intimidate ability, which is even better in doubles, as well as good defensive typing and some really solid moves. But with the addition of its new evolution, this opens up an entire new option, the Aviolite item. This item adds 50% to both your defensive stats if you can still evolve, and with this item, the Intimidate ability, and every single one of my stats dumped into defense, this thing was ready to take all physical hits. Step aside Arceus, there's a new god in town. There is however, one small problem for Quillfish. I tried so hard to make Quillfish work, but man, his moveset in Pokemon Legends Arceus is so dog shit. Now all the Pokemon in this tournament could use all their moves from all their previous games, unless you were a new form. Then you had to only use the moves you could get in Pokemon Legends Arceus, which turn out to be, uh, absolutely terrible. But I made a plan. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna lay some spikes and then he's gonna go boom. That's the whole thing. That's, that's the whole thing. And then you cross your fingers and you say, I hope that person doesn't use protect or I've just gone boom for no reason. But hey, that's, that's what's going on with Quillfish. I also went for an explosion strategy on Bronzong because I thought it'd be funny. And with that, the team was ready. So I got my energy levels up. You guys ever have an energy drink at 4 a.m. in the morning? And we even had time to do a Pokemon rave cave. So I, I, that's something. And then I even got lucky up with my next pack of Pokemon cards. Oh. Yo! Anyway, eventually we got into our first match against Candy Eevee. Now she also brought a sand team. I expected to have powered on and another ground type to come out first, so I led with my levitating Bronzong and Quilfish to get the Intimidate off. I was ready to see God in action. I got the prediction right and I was off to a great start. Now check this out. This is a max attack, 130 base stat, stab super effective Garchomp Earthquake. Let's see how much it does to our boy. Less than a third on Quillfish. I did nothing. What, what oh, am I, I missing? I oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, wait, why did that do nothing? Isn't it poison? Can someone explain this to me? Yeah, I'll explain it to you. You just got to witness the true legendary Pokemon of the Hisui region, and his name is Quillfish Mother. F we got very unlucky with some serious Sand Veil shenanigans. What is this? This is some cheese. Maybe I should get into competitive. Yeah, I guess you're just, Maybe. you're talented. <laughs> but we managed to land an explosion. Come comes out again. Boom for the bronze. Oh, are you kidding me? Explosion. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Wow. And after one good protect, my Garchomp blew me away with how insanely strong he is. <laughs> Why did they just die? Think about oh, it, but just- Oh my god. Man, forget any of my thoughts! <laughs> Holy cow, what a battle! Wow. So, we took our first match, and next up I had Captain Kid. He made me wait 20 entire minutes for him to finish his first match, which had me very worried. And then he told me why it took so long. Ayo. Yo. <laughs> Do you want to take any f***ing longer in your last match? What was uh, that? Sorry about that. Sorry about that. that it, we, we were both running uh, stall teams, so... <laughs> oh my god. I hope you're joking. Uh, uh, I, I wish. I wish, brother. This is, this is um, sad. It was finally time to battle. His team might look a bit weird, and that's because unbeknownst to me, this was the first of many Trick Room teams I was going to fight. Trick Room's a crazy move that makes the slowest Pokemon go first for four entire turns. This lets you use extremely slow, but very powerful Pokemon, which are normally too slow to be big offensive threats. This effect flips the entire battle on its head, and can often destroy offensive teams like mine. I kind of realize I don't have anything to kill the Bronzong at all. I need to burn this thing. It's gonna use body press, and it's gonna kind of cook me. And then I made a huge misplay, switching in my only possible answer into a one-shot. It was looking really bad, but I had a chance. I needed a big explosion for my Bronzong here to level the playing field. 
My item, the Cussed Out Berry, allows you to go first once if you hit 25% health or lower. My plan was to use Endure, which makes you survive on 1 HP, soak a hit, and next turn blow up before anyone else could attack. This was my only chance to get back in the game. And then I'm hitting that Endure. Please hit me. That is a joke. <laughs> the one time you want your opponent to actually land their move. And of course they miss. That's Pokemon for you. On the next turn, he makes a good prediction and thinks I'm going to go for Endure again. But then the Overheat misses again. This move is 90% accurate, and that's a 1 in 100 chance to miss twice in a row. Going for a third spikes. Oh, what? What? <laughs> I then needed some hacks of my own to either flinch or freeze him to not allow that last trick room to go up. And of course, I miss again, and all hope is lost. I respect, I respect that Ice Fang Rock Slide play, though, for sure. I was going to say, Hopcat actually found the one play to deny the trick room, right? Given, given the movesets on both Pokemon here. Ah, Blizzard, that's it. Next up, I had Alfred. Now, this one was going to be a lot quicker of a battle. We're running, like, pretty aggressive teams. So, win or lose, it's pretty fast. Yep. And there's a lot of trick room stalls going on in the background. Oh, yeah. Now, Alfred managed to catch a Weavile in his 30 minutes, which is crazy, because the only time you can catch that is in space-time distortions. He then went for a crazy strategy, where he attacks his own Lucario to give it max attack. While this may have looked very scary, it didn't cause me too much trouble, which is more than I can say for this guy. Gengar is faster than my whole team. It had Energy Ball, which caught me by surprise and absolutely destroyed my Gastronon. I thought my Hippo was going to live one. I was wrong. Also kills me. Okay, well, that's a problem. I eventually killed it, but the damage had well and truly been done. I had only one chance to win this battle, and it was to exploit Alfred's biggest weakness, his commitment to making content. If you if you let Bronzong win, I promise something really cool will happen. What is he about to do? <laughs> it depends if you like content or not. I guess I guess is the challenge I put to you. Do you prefer to win or do you prefer content? Okay, so as long as I don't attack him. Don't just don't kill Bronzong. Okay, deal. Deal. I'm not talking Bronzong. Oh, well, the content, it, I guess it happened. I guess, I guess it did happen. I let him. You, you were mad at your word. You got the win and the content. I guess I've been purely outplayed today. <laughs> well, I tried. I tried, okay? I was now one win and two losses at this point. So it was time to get serious. Tiazu was next. He also had a Gengar, but this time, I was ready. I predicted the energy ball and didn't lose anything to it. Quillfish did absolute work this game, tanking Gengar's hits and firing off loads of icy winds, constantly allowing my Garchomp to outspeed that purple menace and clean up. Now next was one of my closest battles against Point Crow, who can I just say was so friendly and he was a great sport the whole time. I started off well with a perfect prediction. If I were them, I would probably lead with Togekiss and something else. Surf Sludge Wave. Surf Sludge Wave. It's going to be Follow Me Belly Drum. Now this let me show off my great combo, where Surf powers up my own Gastrodon, and the Gastrodon Sludge Wave doesn't even affect my Empoleon. But the Snorlax lived and was still a huge threat. It was finally time for Quillfish to prove his worth. Okay, may maybe a plus six attack from a Snorlax might have been too much, even, even for Quillfish. Now in this match, there were so many clutch survivals and close calls from both sides. Here, my last surf did 22%, so I was hoping the next one here would kill the Snorlax, but it only does 19 and he gets a huge body slam off on me. Next, my Gastrodon not only lives this earthquake, but then also tanks a boosted crunch and fires off a crucial icy wind that let me outspeed with my own Garchomp. Oh, 
are we living? It came down to his final Pokemon, which had me so scared as they were both faster than the rest of my entire team. His ice attacks would shred my ground types and the fire type could melt my Bronzong. And then this happened. Please get this yawn off. Mmm, CC. <gasps> the clutches don't f stop. I was down to my last two Pokemon, but I needed to get into Custat Berry range. The Frostlass fell asleep, and all I needed to do now was finish him off here. I was on my way to being back on top. But of course, nothing goes as you plan in Pokemon. Zen Headbutt is probably better than exploding. Don't miss, bitch. I proceeded to then miss my 90% accurate Zen Headbutt again, but then this happened. Oh, oh my, my god, god. <laughs> what is this? It still wasn't over though. If he had Heat Wave here, which is both opponents, I could lose this game. Luckily for me, the Inferno had no spread moves and he could only kill one of my Pokemon before he went down. I was now 3-2 with an insane match. That was actually insane. Good job, dude. Good Great job. game, that was, that was, that was sick. Match. Yeah, GG, good, good luck. luck with it. My next match, it was not good. I'm gonna spoil it. Everything that could have gone wrong, went wrong. I knew I was up against Pokemon Challengers. That's the, 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 the world's best Nuzlocke player. As if that's something you can just claim, but he's, he's done it. I knew they were going to be a big threat. Firstly, I had to wait yet another 20 minutes for the match to begin. And when the match finally started, I may have forgotten to change my stream over from the face cam to the gameplay. <laughs> look, look, give me a break. It was 6am at this point for me. I was trying not to read chat during the matches so I couldn't see anyone giving me hints. So I just didn't see it. Look, I'm just going to show you what happened in the match in this amazing animation. Welcome! Best Nuzlocker in the world. So yeah, I lost. I don't really want to talk about this match anymore, but but don't worry. Mr. Peachell got his fair share of bad luck in the end. I was now 3-3, and I had one more match. You know, it turns out I really dropped the ball by losing to Alfred as he lost to um literally everybody else. If I could get third place in this pool, I would be happy. Both Kid and Peachell had me playing really well. They'd been using damage calculations mid-match, smart trick room strategies, and overall, they're just deserving to do well. If I came third behind them, I feel satisfied with how I'd done and shown that I'm more than just a Smash player. There was also another reason that I wanted to win my next match. Stan's dead to disrespect my Quillfish. Did you catch everything you wanted in the overworld portion? Yeah, I did. I didn't, I didn't have any issues with that. Interesting. Okay, okay. Even this quillfish. Even this quillfish. Even this quillfish. Hey, but you hate, but stop dissing the quillfish. We muted our mics to truly show we were getting serious and the battle began. It was another trick room team. The third one. I looked at the standings. Nobody in my entire pool who was using an offensive team had beaten any of the three trick room users. It was 11 to the trick roomers and zero to the offense. We did our water type combo lead, expecting Bronzong again to try and set that trick room. It becomes a dangerous game as soon as he gets it up, of trying to switch and protect in order to waste the turns because I had no chance of beating these Pokemon in their trick room. I wasted the first trick room and managed to put the Rhyperior to sleep, but in the process I lost my hip out on and took huge damage on Quillfish, my two most defensive Pokemon, giving him an early lead. I miss yet another Zen Headbutt just for tradition's sake but this one didn't matter at least. I used God for one final Intimidate of the tournament before sacrificing him to my own Surf 
as he set up yet another trick room. I had to waste four more turns. Scizor's knockoff really surprised me and I lost my final defensive Pokemon. It was now three versus six to stands with trick room up. It was not looking good. My water types managed to take out his Scizor and Bronzong, giving me the KO in his first two Pokemon. Now Stance shows he can make some plays of his own, and predicted my Protect and double attacked my Gastrodon. It's now just up to Garchomp and Empoleon, and he was only on 29% health. There was a chance for the comeback though. I pick up a quick kill on the Snorlax, and the third Trick Room in the game goes up. I really don't think I can survive four more turns, so now it all comes down to mind games with using Protect. Now let's stop time right here. If he targets my Empoleon with either of his Pokemon, it's over. Gastron can easily one-shot with an Earth Power, and Dusclops can kill next turn with a second Nightshade. I can't possibly wait out the Trick Room. This was going to be my final play of the tournament. I get my prediction 100% correct as he double attacks my Protect. It worked, but it's not over yet. Hey. Oh, with the double up! Oh, oh, no. Oh, wow. Oh. I protect my Empoleon to defend it from my own Garchomp and go for an Earthquake to hit both of my enemies, but it doesn't kill either of them. We're back to rolling the dice. Rhyperia can wake up this turn, and after Dusclops' Nightshade, it'll be able to Earthquake everything on the field, destroying everyone and taking the win. I spent way too long thinking about what the best thing to do here is, and... Yeah, okay. Nightshade. Okay, it stayed asleep. It stayed asleep. It's over. It stayed asleep. It's done. We did it. We did it. Opcat defeat stands. Very well played, though. Really, really well played for most players, so. Damn, GG. That was a crazy finish. Holy moly. Knocked off the podium. Thrown off the top. Oh, no. We finally overcame a Trick Room team, and I ended up coming third in my pool. Great game to stands and shout out for being a fantastic sport about having such a narrow loss. So in the end, I didn't win the whole tournament, but I did have some great close battles, some awful RNG and some great banter. And I feel like that's what Pokemon is all about. All there was to do now was to watch the grand final. And to my surprise, RT game took our Pokemon challenges 2-0 with some absolutely brutal RNG, getting flinches, poisons, and connecting moves on a Minimicycle Fable when it really mattered. I knew after my game versus Pokemon challenges that the Pokemon Karma was coming for him soon. Shout out to everyone who I played against and shout out to Wolfie for organizing this. It was great fun and I really did appreciate the invite. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like so I get invited next time. And shout out to everyone who played. It was a surreal experience being able to share a Discord call with some creators which I've seen around on YouTube for over 10 years. If you told me I'll be playing against them in the future, I just wouldn't have believed you, so that's kind of crazy. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. I, I, I like the Quillfish, by the way. We've seen a lot of... Uh, we have There's not a lot of Intimidate Pokemon in the format, so using Eevee like Quillfish is kind of a big, a big deal, I think.